This video describes how to perform a lumbar ESP block where lumbar plexus analgesia is desired, for example, in hip and proximal lower limb surgery. This is a list of basic recommended equipment and supplies in adult patients. A curved probe is required for adequate imaging depth of the target and the wider field of view. The erector spiny muscle is much thicker in the lumbar region compared to the thoracic region. Similarly then, a block needle of at least 80 to 100 millimeters in length is recommended. As with most fascial plane blocks, spread and thus clinical efficacy is volume dependent, so at least 20 milliliters of a long-acting local anesthetic is recommended in adults, and up to 40 milliliters has been described in the literature. However, side effects such as motor block and hypotension from epidural spread will be more common with the higher volumes. The intensity of the block and thus the effects can be further modulated by varying the local anesthetic concentration to meet maximum recommended dose limits. Epinephrine should be added to detect intravascular injection and to reduce systemic absorption. Access to the back is required, and so patients must be placed in sitting, lateral or prone positions. The sitting position probably offers the best balance between convenience of positioning and ergonomics. There are two possible imaging and needle approaches to performing this block. The first is a parasagittal view of the transverse processes with an in-plane needle approach from either a cranial caudal or caudal cranial direction, depending on what feels most ergonomic. The second is a transverse view of the transverse process and the intertransverse plane between erector spinae and psoas muscles. Note that sliding the probe slightly cranial or caudal into an intertransverse process view often provides a clearer picture of the boundary in the plane between erector spinae and psoas major muscles, which is the target of injection. This is therefore the view that I would tend to recommend with an in-plane needle approach in a lateral to medial direction. In both cases, the end point for needle tip insertion should be deep to the fascial boundary between erector spinae and psoas major muscle. Note that in the parasagittal view, we can see that this fascial line dips below the level of the bony tip of the transverse process, and thus the aim is not to land the needle tip squarely on the bony transverse process, but instead to aim for the edge of the transverse process and to skim off it to pierce the deep fascia of erector spinae muscle and enter the psoas muscle. The needle should not be advanced too far into the psoas muscle as there's a risk of mechanical contact with the lumbar nerve root or the lumbar plexus proper which would turn this into an actual lumbar plexus block. If available, a nerve stimulator may help reduce this risk further. The same reasoning regarding needle tip position applies with the transverse view. Obtain the intertransverse process view and visualize the fascial separation between erector spinae and psoas muscles. Advance the needle tip to penetrate this fascia, but again, not so deep as to risk contact with the lumbar nerve roots or the neural foramina. In either approach, the appropriate endpoint for local anesthetic injection is to see fluid spread under or deep to the fascia that underlies erector spinae muscle. We don't want to see fluid spread superficial to this fascia that is distending or spreading within the erector spinae muscle. An appropriate target level is L23 or L34 considering the innovation of the relevant structures that are the source of hip and proximal lower limb pain. The psoas muscle can be highly vascular and complications related to vascular puncture are well reported in the lumbar plexus block literature. This is another reason not to insert the needle tip too deep into the psoas major muscle. Take the usual precautions to minimize vascular puncture and the risk of last, including negative aspiration, epinephrine containing local anesthetic solutions, divided injection boluses, and using color Doppler imaging if suspicious. As with almost all ultrasound-guided blocks, an out-of-plane needle approach is also possible in either of these views, but I don't see a clear advantage in this case. This next video will illustrate the performance of a lumbar ESP block in the sitting position for elective hip surgery using a parasagittal in-plane approach. Place the probe over the sacrum and count up to the desired interspace using the parasagittal oblique view of the laminae. Once the target level is reached, L23 in this example, 
slide the probe laterally to image the transfer's processes. If the dropout shadows disappear, this means the ultrasound beam is too lateral and the probe should then be slid medially to reacquire the transverse processes. Insert the block needle in plane to the beam. Adjust the needle angle as needed to avoid directly striking the transverse processes. Advance to pierce the fascia separating erector spinae and psoas major muscle. Hydrolocation with half a mill of fluid will confirm needle tip position. Carefully advance deeper as needed to achieve fluid spread below the erector spinae muscle and its dividing fascia. Inject the total volume of local anesthetic as desired once appropriate needle tip position has been achieved.